Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Nurse Pauline RN. I hope all is keeping well. Today, we're going to be talking about sensory stimulation. Before I get started, please hit your like button. Please hit your subscribe button. If you'd like me to continue bringing you these interesting topics, please share my videos and please comment at the bottom. There are two components of sensory stimulation, perception and reaction. The senses by which people maintain contact with the external environment are vision, visual, hearing, auditory, olfactory, taste, tactile, touch, stereognosis, the ability to perceive and recognize the form of an object using cues from textures, size, spatial properties, and temperatures. Stereogenosis is also sense of space. Cognition involves cerebral functioning, process of conscious thoughts, reality, orientation, problem solving, judgment, comprehension. States of consciousness, one, normal states, delirium, dementia, confusion, lethargy, chronic vegetative state. State of unconsciousness, one, sleep, comatose, stupious. Impaired memory is inability to recall information and behavioral skills. Kinesthetic senses enables a person to be aware of position and movement of body parts. Chronic confusion is irreversible. These are examples of our dementia patient, Alzheimer's patients. We have acute confusion. These are patients with delirium. This patient, delirium is an abrupt onset of global transient changes and disturbances in attention, cognition, and level of consciousness or sleep-wake cycles, otherwise known as delirium. We have expressive, expressive aphasia. This is in a motor-based inability to name common objects or to express simple ideas of words or writing. Receptive aphasia is sensory based ability to understand written or spoken languages. Factors affecting sensory stimulation or influence Capacity to receive or perceive stimuli are age, developmental status, presence or absence of meaningful stimuli, social interaction, environmental factors, cultures, risk for sensory alterations are the elderly, the acutely ill patients, patients that are in the ICU. Some behaviors associated with visual sensory deficits are poor coordination, squinting, underreaching or overreaching for objects, persistent repositioning of objects, impaired night vision, falls. Some behaviors 
associated with tactile sensory deficits in adults are clumsiness. Failure to respond when touch, avoidance touch, sensations of pins and needles, numbness, tingling, unable to identify objects in hand. Peripheral neuropathy is numbness and tingling of affected areas and unsteady gaits. This equilibrium is vertigo. Presbyopia is farsightedness. Macular degeneration is loss of central vision. Stroke is caused by blood clot hemorrhage emboli in the brain. Cataract is opaque areas in your eyes. Xerostomia is decrease of salivary production in the mouth and dry mouth. Diabetic renopathy is blood vessel changes in the retina for patients who are diabetic. Glaucoma is increased interocular pressure that leads to blindness. Astigmatization is irregular curvature of the lenses of the eyes. Myopia is nearsightedness. There are three types of sensory deprivation. One, hearing loss. Two, elimination patterns changes due to new or strange environment. Three, restrictive environment that produces boredom. We have effective effects of sensory deprivation, boredom, restlessness, increased anxiety, panic, increased need for physical stimulation, perceptual effects of sensory deprivation uses changes in visual Motor coordination reduces color perception, loss of tactile accuracy, reduces ability to perceive shape and size, changes in time and judgment. Sensory overload is when a person receives multiple sensory stimuli and cannot disregard or selectively ignore some stimuli. These patients are on monitored floors. These patients are in pain. These patients are critically ill patients. Patients who are at risk for sensory deprivations are patients who are on bed rest, patients who are depressed, patients with communicable diseases, Patients with nervous system di diseases with sensory alterations. When assessing sensory and perceptual function, the nurse assesses the nursing history of the patient. We assess mental status. We assess physical examination. Identify patient at risk, assess patient support system, assess, assess mental status, nursing strategies to prevent injuries with sensory alterization, speak calmly with the patient and move slowly with the patient, communicate with confidence, explore with patient what stimuli are distressing the patients? Example, incoming phone calls. We can decrease incoming phone calls, decrease excess visitors coming to visit the patients, 
decrease the amount of times we disturb our patients. If you're going in to change your patients, you're going in to check your blood pressure, try to do all at once. Decrease the less time we spend interrupting these patients. We can administer pain medications to these patients and we can also administer anti-anxiety medications to these patients. We can manage sensory deficits with the use of sensory aids, airing aids, glasses, dentures. We can offer them mouth swabs, oral care. When we're bathing them, we can use a thermometer to assess the temperature of the water. We don't want it to be too hot for these patients. Avoid clutters in the patient's room. Avoid environmental stimuli for these patients. Use family pictures for dementia patients with all families. Maybe families can bring pictures to the rooms because Patients want to have a sense of familiarity, so we bring family pictures from home. We assess these patients for fall. We decrease the noise level. We decrease the lightings in these patients' rooms. We do frequent rounds for these patients. We keep patients close to nursing stations. We use bed alarm, chair alarms. We use communication boards for these patients. We use sign languages for these patients. They are provided in the hospital for the patients who aren't able to talk. Thank you. Please hit the like button. Please hit your subscribe button. If you'd like me to continue bringing, bringing you these wonderful videos, please share my videos. Please comment below. Thanks for listening in. I hope you're doing well with your studies. Stay blessed. Be good. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.